smart home hubs. I did two of them using Homebridge and Home Assistant, which were built on a budget, but it had two flaws, SD card failures and limited Zigbee device support. Today, we will build a next level smart home hub using a static state drive, the Argon 1 M.2 case, and the newly released Hoops V4. So let's not waste our time like I always say, and let's jump into this tutorial. Hello and welcome to my channel. And if you are new over here and into HomeKit DIY, then there are tons of plugin tutorial videos that I have done. So please do take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. First things first, I will be hosting a free live class on how to build, manage and maintain your home computer network. So you're always guaranteed with that smart home experience and all of your smart devices are connected and talking to each other. So please check out the link in the description and sign up to get an invite from me. Well, there are many ways of building a smart home. There is no one size fits all. Now, thanks to white label products and the developers community, you can still get that unofficial home kit support to where there is none. You can also connect them locally and get that cross brand integration which very well fits to your budget. Today, we will build and take our smart home hub to the next level dedicated towards Apple HomeKit by using a Raspberry Pi 4, a 64 GB static state drive, the Argon 1 M.2 case, and the Conbee 2 Zigbee gateway stick. Now, just a disclaimer, I put this affordable solution together based on my own research for $830 it's been working perfectly for the last four months without any hiccups. You can also get this small form factor with this hub right here. That's almost the same size with your Apple TV. Plus with all the ports located behind, it makes cable management a lot more easy. Plus improved performance because of the SSD, high read and write speeds. But the cherry on the cake is the Zigbee support that we will install in this device that will give us 1,500 plus devices that we can integrate with this hub. So for all of this to work and integrate with Apple HomeKit, we will be using the newly released Hoobs V4. I've also broken down the video into six parts with their timestamps in the description. They are one, building the hub, two, the Hoobs V4 install, then we're going to upgrade the entire system, followed by the MQTT install. Then we will install Zigbee to MQTT for that high device uh, integration. Then we will integrate all of that into Apple HomeKit. So this is going to be an interesting guide. So please follow along step by step. And now let's jump into this tutorial. First things first, let's go ahead and apply the thermal pads to the Raspberry Pi first, as it would make it much easier to install. First align and insert the audio pin of the daughter card and then align with the HDMI ports as it makes it much more easier to push the cards together and make sure it's nice and flush to get the default HDMI ports support. Once that's completed, you want to make sure it's aligned with the heat sink as well as with the GPIO pins and push it slowly from the top, then go ahead and put in the four screws by following the locations in the manual. Once that's completed, let's take a closer look and show you the power jumper settings that was kept to default so that I can use the button that's located behind to turn on and off the box when required. Now, let's add in the M.2 SSD drive to the lower base and insert it into the slot. There's a small screw that needs to be put in place to secure the SSD drive correctly. But before we go and close the box, there is no SD card installed. Now let's flip over the base and there are four more additional screws to be installed. And again, make sure the card is flushed into the slots and with the GPIO pins. With the box seal, with the four screws, let's now connect the hub using the male to male USB connector with one end going into the computer 
and the other end going to the lower section that's connected to the SSD drive. To flash Hoops V4, open up Belena Echo, select the file which is in A.zip format, click on open, and then you want to go ahead and select a target, which is the SSD drive connected to your computer, and then click on flash. You will be then prompted for the system password. The decompressing of the file is very quick, followed by the flashing process, which is writing at 120 megabytes per second which is a 400% more faster than the standard SD card of 20 MB per second. It will then validate the flashing process and you will see a flash completed message. The whole process takes a minute and a half. Disconnect the USB cable and then insert in the USB connector from the SSD drive to the Raspberry Pi. Now, with the device already flashed with hoops before, let's go ahead and connect it uh, to the network. But before we do that, we want to make sure we also connected the Convy2 stick with this device. The first 3.0 port is already used by the SSD drive. We're going to connect the Convy2 stick to the second USB 3.0 port. And also make sure when you're using the Convy2 stick, you're using a extension cable. This way it doesn't interfere with any of the radio waves that's around this device. So let me go quickly, connect this device, and I'll be back soon. All right, I am back. So from this point onwards, all we're gonna do is copy paste a lot of commands until we go into the integration into Apple HomeKit. First things first, what we wanna do is we wanna update the system. We wanna update the entire Linux structure that this uh, device has from the hoops before install. So I've got all of the links in the description. All we have to do is just follow that guide and go through with all of the installations. So let's go now and SSH into the box. If you do see that error, all you have to do is make sure you can delete it. Just click on open in the command. So this, uh, there's nothing to get worried about. So let's try again. This time I'm going to use the IP address of the box. Okay, so we're in. So first thing first, let's go and follow this entire command list that I have over here to go and update the system. Now, based on your internet connection, uh, this could vary between um, 15 to 30 minutes for the entire integration to uh, complete. So let's do an update. Now with all of the firmware updated, that even includes the Hoops V4 system, it's very important you want to restart the system. To do that, all you have to type is sudo reboot. Give it a couple of seconds and the system is gonna come back uh, online. We're going to SSH back into the uh, box to make sure the app ROM is updated as well as we're going to install the fan script to make sure the fan of the M.2 case kicks in based on the temperature of the CPU. So let's go ahead and type in this, com paste this command. So from here, from here we see that the bootloader was already updated. If not, we, we would need to go and restart. So now since it's updated, let's go ahead and install the fan script to control the fan of the argin one case. Let's copy paste this command here to configure. Yes, adjust. Now these are the default values for the fan to kick in based on temperature. When it's 55 uh, Celsius degrees, the fan kicks in to 10%. When it's 60, it's 55. And when it's 65 degrees, the fan kicks in 
So with that said, we've got now the entire Argon 1M.2 setup ready to go ahead with the rest of the installations. So we've got the system updated. Now let's go and install the MQTT, which is very simple with just two commands. I have the link in the description. Let's copy the first one. Let's copy the second one. And then let's go ahead and configure the file. Now in the file, we're going to add in additional three lines. That's in the text here. Copy, paste. You want to make sure allow anonymous is false so that uh, you require an authentication to access the MQTT service. So control X, yes. And let's go create a username and password. So let's copy, paste, put in the password. We will need these credentials for the Zigbee to MQTT service. So once that's installed, let's go ahead and open the MQTT Explorer to see if the service is working. We're going to put in the information of the host, which is the IP address, the username that we just created, then you want to type on connect. So we see that the service is connected. So with this, we know the MQTT service installed. Now let's go on to the next one to get in the Zigbee to MQTT. For the Zigbee to MQTT, again, let's follow the steps that's in the guide, that's in the official guide, and we can get through with that as well. So this is the official guide over here, which I've added in the description as well. So continuing with the SSH, we're going to continue with all of the guides. So first things first, what we want to do is go ahead and locate the Convy2 stick. So we see that the, the Convy2 stick is located by the device. So once you see this message, we can go ahead with the installation. Now one of the good things while the installation is in, in progress, you can see that the Zigbee has got a lot of device support, which I've added the link. So it's around about 1,679 devices that you can support with this. And the good thing is all the different device types that you can add in. So if you're looking for a device, uh, all of those white label products, this is a place to go and check once in a while to see which one you'd like to integrate with HomeKit. So with that being said, we can go now to the next step of having the node. And then we're going to go and check the version. And we're also going to check in the NPM version. So once that's completed, let's go and clone the Zigbee to MQTT repository. Then we're going to run the next command. Now over here, you want to watch out to put in the right uh, user information. In my case, it's Hoots. If you're using Homebridge, it's PI and Home Assistant as well. So enter, and then we're going to go and install all of the dependencies to run the service. Let's go and configure the configuration.yaml file. In this one, we're going to add in some more values. So first thing first, we want to go ahead and tell where the MQTT service is running. So this is the same server. So 192.168, which is the IP address of the Argon one box. You want to go and put in the user information that we had created with MQTT, as well as the password. Now there's a couple of more values we need to add. First thing I want to tell the uh, Zigbee to MQTT, the adapter that we are running. So it is this value here. So you want to add this to the configuration and we're also going to add in the front end so that we can have a web interface to see how all our devices are connected. So the IP address is the Argon one, which is the same that's running MQTT. And also we want to go in and add in the security network key as well. So again, what we've added over here is the MQTT service, the username and password where our, what adapter we are using and to enable the front end with the port, desired port, so in my case is 8080 and the network key. So control X, Y, enter. So with that being done, let's go ahead and start the service to see if it's working. Just want to up, up, open up a little bit. So a couple of things to see, it has found the Convy2 stick, which is over here. 
it was able to connect with the MQTT server. So with this, the service is able to connect with the other bits that we want to add in with this hub. So we're going to type in control C. Now for it to work automatically and restart on its own, we have to do a little bit, uh, one more configuration. We're going to create another file for the service. And we're just going to have to paste this text, all of it that is over here. Okay. So first things first, we want to update the user information to hoops. If you're using um, HomeBridge or Home Assistant, you leave it as PI. And then the ex for the service to start, if you're using HomeBridge, the location can be just npm start or use a local forward slash bin. So you want to check the documentation that's over here. So this is the only information we need. Let's do control X. We save the file, enter. Now let's go and start the service automatically. And let's see the status. So with this, we can see that the status is running. There is no errors it was able to join uh, the network as well. So this confirms the Zigbee to MQTT service running without any errors. So let's do control C. And this is the last command to enable the service to run automatically and even after any resets. So even with the guide says you're all done. Now just in case in the future you want to update the, the database that's in your smart home hub, you can go to the um, Zigbee service over here and then add in. If there's any new inclusions of devices, you can run this service that's over here and then you're able to uh, connect. So with that being said, let's go and do a quick reboot. Now with the Zigbee to MQTT service already installed, um, you want to make sure you have all of your devices into pairing mode when adding them into the Zigbee to MQTT service. You want to make sure you want to add all of the devices into, into the service first and then import it all into Apple HomeKit because then you don't have the double effort of renaming the devices when you're importing them into Apple HomeKit. So let's go quickly and open up the, uh, the uh, front end of the Zigbee to MQTT service to see if it's already detected the lampshade that's just over here. So I have the lampshade over here. Now, so let's see if it's already picked up. So I'm going to access it. So the IP address plus the port that we had added. So you see that it's already detected. The service is so quick that uh, it, uh, I don't know in how many seconds, it sweeps the entire network to see what all devices into Zigbee to MQG are available. So it's it's quite hard to capture because it's it, it quickly uh, appears onto the screen. So this is the Zigbee, Zigbee to MQTT service that I have over here. So I can go ahead and rename it. So I'm just going to call it Lampshade. So this name will already be uh, imported into Apple Home given to go ahead and add the service. So I can click on it and I can turn on and off. So you can see that uh, you know, it's right here turning on in front of me. So I can already turn it off. So this from this point onwards, we've completed the entire Zigbee to uh, MQTT integration. If you want, you can go on add in more devices, your sensors or your other Zigbee uh, device types. Now let's go and add the same service to Apple HomeKit. Now for Apple HomeKit and with Hoops V4, with this new version, all you have to do is open up the Mac app or the Windows app that you have with you. So let's go ahead and open up the app and let's create a credentials since we didn't do it previously. And first things first, what we want to do is we want to go to and look for the Zigbee to MQTT plugin. You want to go ahead and install it. You can select a new bridge. So it'll take a couple of seconds to create a bridge and then add the service. So to configure this plugin, we go to configuration. All we got to do is add in the IP address of the, the hub that we just created, the argon one M.2, the IP address of the device. You also want to make sure you reserve the IP address in your network. So it always, um, any network restarts, it gets the same IP address. It's very important and fundamental as well. And you, all, you also want to go ahead and create the credentials. Make sure you don't forget the credentials and you want to go ahead and hit save. Let's go to the logs. You'll see that the device is already connected and it has found your new accessory as well, the lampshade. So let's go now into accessories 
and we can see that the lampshade is now available. So if I turn it on and off, the device is available. Now let's go ahead and scan the QR code and bring the entire service into Apple HomeKit and complete this can entire smart home hub um, installation. So what I've done is I've quickly gone and scanned the QR code and added it to uh, Apple HomeKit. Now let's check if the same lampshade is available uh, in the Home app. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Home app and I can see that the lampshade is available so I can turn it on, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. So with this, it completes that the entire MQTT service, Zigbee to MQTT service, as well as the HomeKit integration is working successfully. Finally, there we are. Collaboratively, we have built our next level smart home hub dedicated towards Apple HomeKit. Now to keep all of this going, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button because that's the motivator, that's the real driver. The more the merrier for bringing all of this content for us and if there's anything I can help it, don't feel shy to leave a comment down below to keep the conversation going. And do visit the developer's webpage to give them your support as well. Now, don't forget to also sign up for the free live class on how to build, manage, and maintain your home computer network. We all have questions that need answers. So until the next time, my friends, have a nice day. Cheers and happy automation.